All right, everyone, we're gonna keep going and let's get started with our second panel. Great, so we're talking about entrepreneurial mindset with a fabulous panel. And um, I'm sure this will be a very exciting and enlightening panel for you all. We'll get you. We need to get um, a mic for Yanide, please. All right, so my name is Diane Garza. I am so happy to be back home. This literally is home for me. I am also a Hoya, uh, graduated way back uh, from my um, college days here and um, also have worked with the Latin America Leadership Program for more than 14 years already. Uh, yes, in developing leadership programs for all sorts of groups from Latin America. So excited literally to be back home with you all. I'm also an executive coach and I work with, um, beyond my work with Georgetown, I also work with large companies and startups in helping their leaders um, to develop the skills necessary for the future of work, whether it's on a one-to-one -one basis or with leadership development training programs. And so I'm excited to be surrounded by so many leaders today. Um, and so following and building on what we just heard in the previous panel, we're gonna be talking now and probably take it a little bit deeper. We're gonna talk about entrepreneurial mindset in this panel, all right? So I'm going to introduce our amazing panelists and then we're gonna get started with this amazing conversation. So we have with us um, Nancy Conrad. She is the founder and chairman of the Conrad Foundation. She's a former teacher and has become a recognized leader in transformative education and named one of the top 100 leaders in STEM education. She's served as a featured speaker at national and international conferences. Her presentations include TED, MIT, and the Global Competitiveness Forum in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. She also presented at the Global Diversity Leadership Conference at Harvard University and the National Modeling and Simulation Coalition Conference in Washington, DC. Nancy has also testified before the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Science, Space, and Technology, detailing how the Conrad Foundation exemplifies the use of partnership to improve STEM education. Right, so we just heard a lot about partnerships. She's the wife of the late astronaut Pete Conrad, who during the Apollo 12 mission became the third man to walk on the moon. Thank you for being with us, Nancy. We also have with us Carla Chaman. She is a Deputy Division Chief of Inter Internal Communications for the International Monetary Fund, where she has served in different roles for more than 14 years. She's a strategic communications expert, specialized in change management, international development, finance and economics, with over 20 years of experience applied to international, private, and public sectors. Previously, she's also worked at global multilateral organizations like the World Bank, the Inter-American Development Bank, and the European Central Bank. She's currently the founder of URMA, a Peruvian NGO serving women in Latin America. URMA supports women in vulnerable populations such as rural immigrants with training, mentoring, and advisory services to facilitate their economic growth and personal development. She focuses on areas, they focus on areas such as finances and economy, leadership and communications, as well as digital technologies. Thank you for being here, Carla. And we also have Yanire, which even though you all know her, you've heard from her, but she hasn't actually been properly introduced. So I'm excited to do that right now. <laughs> Yanire is the director of MET Community Foundation a nonprofit that offers training and support to women entrepreneurs in more than 10 countries. Yanire has more than 20 years of experience in areas of gender inclusion, diversity and sustainability within multinationals in the financial sector, academia and consultancy. Her experience with organizations such as Accenture, Booz Allen, Banco Santander, and the Inter-American Development Bank, as well as the World Bank, is complemented by her research and lecturing at international business schools, such as EA Business School and Georgetown. She's currently a guest lecturer in gender inclusion and sustainability in the GCL program at Georgetown. She also has a law degree from the University of Deusto, a master's in international relations, and an MBA from EA Business School. She also has degrees from the London Business School, Harvard Business School, Georgetown University, and Cambridge University in the areas of innovation, sustainability, and change management. 
She's currently focused on research and publication of studies on gender within the PhD program in competitiveness, innovation, and sustainability of Uni University of Deusto. So she's, as you know, she's participated as a speaker <clears throat> in more than 300 events throughout the world. And um, she's also, <laughs> I'm gonna cut to the chase. She's the dynamic force behind this Women Entrepreneurs Forum. Without her, we wouldn't be here today. So as you can see, I'm so excited to be moderating this panel and um, get the conversation started. So with that, we are surrounded today by entrepreneurs from all around the world in the audience, you know, as our panelists, the guest experts that are joining us. And um, as you know, innovation drives, sorry, entrepreneurship is something that sparks innovation. It sparks economic growth, right? And so what we wanna look at in this particular panel is that before you have that spark, that ignites all of that change and all of that growth, we have to start with the mindset, right? You have to have that chispa, that idea. And so we're gonna be talking today about entrepreneurial mindset and how that's a catalyst for all of this change and growth that we wanna see. Before we go deeper into it, you know, we're gonna talk about why it's important, no matter what you do for a living. So whether you are an entrepreneur or you work at a large organization or company, Right. How can the entrepreneurial mindset benefit you and benefit those around you? We want to talk about um, some real world examples also on how you can strengthen your own mindset. So just to make sure we're on the same page, entrepreneurial mindset is a way of thinking. Okay, It enables you to overcome challenges, to be decisive and accept responsibility for your outcomes. It's this need to constantly improve your skills, to learn, to grow, to continue to move forward with continuous action and ideas. So what we wanna think, think about today is that anyone can develop an entrepreneurial mindset, right? So with that, I wanna start with Yanire um, because you're doing your PhD research on this topic, right? So we wanna start with you to tell us more about entrepreneurial orientation. So I wanna hear from you, what is some of the background, some of the definitions to help us lay the groundwork for this conversation? Um, so I have to admit that this is my favorite topic. And not only my favorite topic, but also I know for a long time, uh, Carla, we used to be colleagues at the IDB. So it's my pleasure to be here. And see, at the, I, I think that the three of them are entrepreneurs or intrapreneurs, because I think Carla is both. It's an entrepreneur and also it's an entrepreneur because sometimes it's even more challenging to create things within structures that are outside. So I really respect people that I, they want to create things within uh, a kind of a big structure like a, maybe the IDV, the World Bank, or the, so, but this is not a new topic. So now we talk a lot about entrepreneurial mindset, but entrepreneurial orientation, if you go um, in Google and you go to the Google, uh, in the academia and you find the, the the journals, there, is, there are a lot of journals that they talk about the entrepreneurial orientation. The entrepreneurial orientation is not uh, a new topic at all. Actually, it's like has been a lot of, uh, there is a lot of research focused on two uh, sides, the firm, entrepreneurial, firm entrepreneurial orientation, and also the individual entrepreneurial orientation. And also there are like five um, dimensions of this topic. So when you analyze what is the entrepreneurial orientation, you analyze the autonomy, the innovativeness, the proactivity, the risk taking, and the competitiveness. So, um, so these are the ingredients that when you analyze each one of them, you can see differences among women and men. And when you analyze a company that, and that sometimes there are certain companies that are more, uh, that they have a higher entrepreneurial orientation because you can define that the company, certain companies are more like uh, uh, conservative, let's say, and others not. It's because you analyze each one of these, uh, in these ingredients in these topics, and you can see differences among women and men. So it's very interesting and everything, and that's what I'm now doing in my research, in my PhD, is just trying to, I would love, the ideal is to demonstrate that it's good for the companies to have entrepreneurial people. It's good for the firms to have entrepreneurial mindset. It should be good, not for the good as the reputational, it's also good for the business. And that is what I'm now focused to prove and to demonstrate that when you have entrepreneurial 
women within your like board and within your employees, that it should be good for the business. That's what I'm, so thank you. Amen, love that. <laughs> so with that, that, that gives us a lot of context now, and I want to shift the conversation now to talk about entrepreneurial mindset. I'd love to hear from both Carla and Nancy. Um, what do you think it means to think like an, think like an entrepreneur? I'll jump in with what's left of my voice. Sorry, people, this is it for the day. Um, I want to give you an example of probably the most far out, literally, entrepreneurial venture that this world has ever known. And that's how we got to the moon. That was really crazy stuff over 50 years ago. We started with nothing. We had no science. We had no astronauts. We had no vehicles. We didn't know how to get there. We didn't even know what it looked like once we got there. So what did this take? And I want to offer this as a framework for what this group is trying to do, because it's actually a very interesting overlay, because you have a vastly different community of practice worldwide. Now, the advantage of doing this now is the internet, because there are no borders and there are no boundaries. Mm -hmm. And when my husband stood on the moon and looked back at Earth, he saw a fragile little blue and white marble suspended in a black velvet sky, no borders, no boundaries. Perfect timing, people. Here's the framework. Go back and look at it. It was leadership, that was Kennedy. It was funding. It was government, industry, and academia. All are present here. Special sauce, 400,000 people working together with a singular goal. Now, if you asked anyone, there's a great story about this very famous journalist who came down to Johnson Space Center, which is the head of manned spaceflight, now human spaceflight, thank you. And we know Artemis is going to go. And of course, they're talking about a woman's boots on the moon. And judging from here, I think it's going to be a stiletto. Uh, so this woman, very famous journalist, was interviewing this guy. And, she asked him, you know, what do you do here? And he said, oh, ma'am, I'm sending a man to the moon. Oh, and she interviewed him for like an hour and a half. And finally, she said, now tell me your name again. He said, I, my name is Artemis Jones. And what is your job here? He says, ma'am, I'm a janitor. Everyone that was involved in that project, lesson for you, was involved in sending humans to the moon. So when you get that massive overlay of concept and goal setting mm -hmm. and the collaboration and all those pieces I just mentioned to you, that's when this can become a different kind of a moonshot. So I just offer that as the uber entrepreneurship role model. By the way, risk taking, holy Christmas. So in, in space business, failure is not an option. In entrepreneurship, it's mandatory. Mm -hmm. You must, and we teach that. I work with kids 13 to 18 all over the world, and we've taken the model of the moonshot and invited young people to create commercially viable solutions to solve big challenges in space, energy, cyber, and health. We don't fund them. Our big prize is uh, patent awards, which we do with Denton's. Who's here from Denton's? Somebody was from Denton's. <laughs> there you are, Denton's. Uh, is one of our law firms. And these kids are creating solutions to amazingly huge challenges. Mm -hmm. We don't use the word problem. That has barriers. Challenges has solutions. So we've taken the model and overlaid it into the education sector. So I invite you to think about it, to overlay it into what your goal setting might be. And I'm happy to help in any way I can. Thank you. I love that. Thank you so much, Nancy. Carla. Uh, excellent uh, example, Nancy. And I would like to, to bring us back from the moon yeah. to, to the example of the janitor, right? I was reading the other day, what are the different components about intrapreneurship, which is the application of all these fantastic skills, risk-taking, 
passion uh, early adopters, all that, and bring it back into the organization. And I will talk about that in a minute, but let's stick with the, uh, stick with the janitor example. And one element of all the ways in which we can achieve a mission impossible, right? It is not only the head, the talent, it's not only the heart that we have heard a lot in the previous panel, uh, it is not only the hands to do that, but it's also the sense of becoming part of a home, right. the community. Right. And one of the elements of many that we can talk about the, the entrepreneurship mindset and skills has to do with the powerful of connecting with people and connecting to something, a goal, a vision. And I think this is extraordinary because if you do not belong, that you, that if you don't feel that you do not belong to something bigger than you, uh, frustrations take over, um, problems take over. And it is not only the mission of the team, but also how you as individual relate to that activity. And I think this is extremely important. Connections, and I think you guys were saying earlier, right? It is about exchange in a genuine manner, it is a matter of, of having not a transactional interaction. It is more than that, it's a transformational interaction. And for me, bottom line is the power of inspiring people yeah. to really move ahead to the, towards the same goal. So the janitor was inspired. The janitor made her role taking a man to the moon. How fantastic example, yeah, Nancy. I mean, it, it was that whole collaboration. Yeah, and that's the kernel of the of the mystery of how we got to them. Absolutely, and 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 what you were saying, right? And, and Janita, you also touched on on that earlier. Um, I am an entrepreneur. Several of us are an entrepreneur. Right? When you are an entrepreneur, you have your vision. You made the decisions at the end of the day because you are a good leader. Leader in front of people, bringing everybody. When you are an entrepreneur, and I work in, in, in an international organization that it is very bureaucratic, like several of us that might be working, you need to lead from behind. Yeah. And you are constrained by the challenges of this organization. Alejandra said it something, I think it was in the introduction to Alejandra, that she cons considers herself a disruptor. When you are an entrepreneur, you are a disruptor but you need to be very smart on how to disrupt the organization to become not a disruptor just because, mm -hmm. but a reformer, to become really agent of change without the organization. Love that. And, and what would you say are some of those skills um, that accompany that entrepreneur mindset? So this is extremely inspirational in terms of you know, taking a man to the moon. How do we disrupt, whether it's within an organization or creating something new? But now to land that a little more for people that want to, you know, they have an idea, they have this yearning and they want to create something new, create a change. What are some of those skills that they should develop or some of the things that they should try? Yeah. I mean, I, we're born with potential galore. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to find our purpose. And I find that most people that are the change agents are purpose driven. And so, for example, I'll just give you my purpose. Um, I work in education, I'm a teacher. So teachers are kind of like spies. You know, spies always spy, well teachers always teach. And it's just the way it is. And I've been doing this kind of education which is purpose driven. So how do we bring these young people to be participants in what tomorrow looks like mm -hmm. rather than test takers, rote learning students. You know, knowledge is now a commodity. So we've got Google, we've got chat GPT. I can write an essay, not only can I write it brilliantly, I could do it in the style of Faulkner if I wanted to, right? Critical thinking is our uniquely human asset. How might we invite young people to apply that critical thinking skill to help us to solve the challenges that we're working on today? And how might we redesign the education platform so that we can create an innovative workforce to, to sustain the knowledge-based economy? 
those are two big challenges that kind of fit into this whole conversation. It's sort of the center of the onion, if you will. So how do you do all that? Motivation, passion, inclusion. And it's, yes, it's DEI, but it's bigger than DEI. Definitely. It's all the kids. It's everywhere. Our kids come from literally Australia to Zimbabwe. And we don't run around going to schools. They find us. Guess how? That little magic machine, the internet. <laughs> anyway, that's a really great way to connect all of this that it's, I'm a systems thinker, obviously. I mean, that sticks out like a sore thumb. But the systems that we have at hand now are so perfect to attain the goal that you want to do. It's just up to us to figure out how we collaborate and bring the janitor and the senator together to make these things viable and deployable and happen and create the solutions. Boy, that was a long-winded one. I love that. <laughs> Me with no wind. <laughs> Perhaps to complement what Nancy said nicely, um, the power of believing in oneself is critical. And it might sound like a cliche, right? But if you peel this as an onion, what is behind this one, right? You need to have a talent, the head part. What are your skills? What are you really good at? What are your values? Are my values in sync with the organization, in sync with my community, in sync with what I want to do if I want to do a startup, and the passion. So those three elements are important to, to really pin the believing in yourself and that you are capable of doing things. I, I, you mentioned that I am the founder of, of, of URMA. URMA is an NGO in Peru. Prior to that, I had another NGO called Newstance, uh, also working with women in this particular case, focus on junior professional <laughs> women about to take off, and we were giving them the empowerment needed. In all what I see across this different group of women is that in Latin American societies and in other regions, there is this sense of maybe I cannot do it. Maybe I need someone else to do it. And why is that? Because we don't feel, women sometimes don't feel equipped that they have the skills to do that. Lack of education, poor education, no independence, um, not being financially independent. Okay. So there are different elements. So when we say you need to believe in yourself, you need to believe that you are able to do that. It's not just we want to see that happening because you need to believe it. No, no, no. We need to anchor that in talent, skills, being properly equipped. This is true for anyone who wants to do a startup and start an entrepreneur by themselves, or if they want to make a reform in a big organization in the government, like Alejandra has done it. They have to believe that it is possible, but it is not just belief for the sake of believing, is that needs to be anchored in things that are tangible, real, that gives you the empowerment needed to move ahead and really achieve whatever goals that, that you define. Mm -hmm. Love that, and it connects to what um, Professor Tinsley said at the beginning, right? It's not just about thinking positive, right? And like all these rainbows and unicorns, uh, just for the sake of it, but really having that belief and being able to continue even beyond those failures or those challenges that you're gonna face. And on that one, just to complement what Nancy said, when you said what are the skills or the elements on the entrepreneurial mindset, one critical element is the, the curiosity but also our growth mindset, meaning that I am learning every time. It is not that my mindset is fixed, I know it all, I can implement. You learn every day, but that learning needs to be really genuine, that you are open and curious to see different ways. I call it superpowers. Yes, that's right. Yes. Lots of superpowers here. Yanire, yeah. you've worked with hundreds and thousands of women throughout Latin America, you know, through MET community. I'd love to hear your insights on this as well. Well, I think that, um, so there are like certain qualities, certain skills that a lot of people, they born with them and some of them, they have to develop them. But uh, if I have to summarize, like I would say that passion, commitment, um, and, uh, and then self-confidence, um, self-esteem is very important and sometimes women, we are not. Um, perseverance, proactivity, 
and also uh, the change management and resilience. I think that all of them, um, especially some of them, we are not, maybe you are not like self-confidence, but others like resilience, we are here. So I think that a combination of all these ingredients is what makes people to succeed when they start a project, uh, whatever they do. And that's why when some people, you like some people or you know some people and you say, whatever this person is going to do, when you see the face, it's going to be successful. Not because of the idea, because of the person that is behind the idea. So in my opinion, the, that part is the first part. And then the knowledge, the everything, the experience mm -hmm. is super important, but the first is there. Can I add one piece? Of course. I also think as wonderful as we all are, someone needs to take us under their wing. Someone needs to believe in us. Mm -hmm. And whether it's a teacher or a boss or a professor or a, a nanny or whatever it might be, that, that external validation that comes even to kids that are in really bad circumstances um, can change their whole lives. And we see that every day in the work that we do. Of course. Um, we take kids under our wing and we give them their moonshot. Can I share the backstory of that too, for you? Yes. So now you know, so Pete went to the moon and before Pete went to the moon, <laughs> Pete was expelled from school in the 11th grade. Oh, he had a learning disability. Couldn't read or spell. What was wrong, you guys? What was wrong with him? Dyslexia. They didn't know what it was. They thought he was stupid. So they threw him out of this snooty school. And um, his mom found a little boarding school in upstate New York. And Pete got there and the headmaster saw something in him, took him under his wing. And Pete ended up with a scholarship to Princeton. Well, Pete liked to fly. When he got to Princeton, he became an aeronautical engineer. Liked to fly and he didn't have to read or spell. <laughs> went on to become a, oh, then he was doing his test pilot thing, went on to fly four flights in space, actually, was awarded a Congressional Space Medal of Honor for his rescue of Skylab. Then he went on to create the next generation of vehicles, what Branson, Musk, and Bezos are doing today, stand on his shoulders. An educator took a kid under his wing. Take someone under your wing, reach out. I mean, I, I mentor about three young women now. It was five and now I've reduced it to three. It's a big responsibility mm -hmm. and it's so heartfelt and so important. And it doesn't have to be heavy duty, but believe in someone other than yourself that you can bring onto the journey and be part of their story. Love that, yeah. I, I always say that, I totally agree. I, I mean, at the end, sometimes you think that you are doing things for the others. But at the end, when given, you're also doing the things for yourself. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. Yeah. The mentorship programs, for instance, within any organization, it's a perfect example of these powerful connections and give and take. It is a learning experience for both mentee and mentors. So thank you. Love that. Important. And the good news is that this entrepreneurial mindset, and I've seen this with hundreds of people that I've coached, right? That developing that self-confidence, developing those skills is something that you can do over time, right? It's not, uh, obviously some people might be born with more of a disposition and you say, oh, they're just a natural born leader. But the thing is that there, it's actually a set of skills and that means that we can develop them. We can work on them, we can strengthen those, okay? So um, we all have that ability, right? If we seek the support, if we seek the mentors, if we study, if we dedicate ourselves to it, this is something that you can grow and cultivate on your own as well. So to close, um, I would love to hear from you all in 30 seconds or less, just some final advice that you have for our audience members. Um, we'll start with, with um, Nancy. Oh boy, how about an old saying I love, shoot the moon, even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. <laughs> yes, love that. Thank you. Okay. Carla. Um, I think generosity, it's important. I believe in, 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 in being generous with your knowledge, with what you have, because in 
the process of connecting with other people, you will learn more about yourself and you can believe about yourself as well. So by believing as Nancy and Janine said about others. So the genuine, gener genuine generosity when you engage with others is critical for me. Thank you. I already <coughs> talked about the, the qualities and the skills. So uh, the last thing that I would like to add is that try to be, uh, to be like with people that are always or smarter or uh, prettiest or have, like they are better than you. It's the only way to improve yourself. It's the only way to push yourself. And it's the only way, so it could be a mentor, could be a role model, could be, uh, I mean, if, like someone from your family, but try not to be, uh, not to feel that you are the, the best in the room because that is the worst and you will not go into, uh, so uh, to create anything and you're, if you're not with people that are always better than you. Absolutely. Love that, well thank you so much. I'm inspired and I hope that you are too, uh, to continue to grow and to go out there and change the world. Uh, one small thing at a time, we can all do it with our feet on the ground um, and making things happen. So thank you all for your attention. Thank you ladies, it has been a pleasure. Thank you.